Okay, we'll get started. Uh, if you don't have a handout, there are some handouts back in the my right hand uh, and back there. Our main topic today is going to be 5G and hotspots uh, tethering. Before we get to our main topic, we'll cover a few uh, club agenda items. Our next meeting uh, will be back here in the Caribbean room on October 16th. We'll talk about smart devices. Uh, you've probably all seen them now. Uh, thermostats, lights, locks, cameras, the Amazon Dot and Echo and Google Now. We'll talk about some of those, the features, and uh, specifically what I have and what I like there. Uh, we also have, if you're not familiar, we have a Macintosh uh, special interest group, and they meet once a month. Their next meeting is next week on Friday the 27th. And so if you uh, are interested, have a Mac or even an iPhone or a tablet, uh, and want to keep up to date on what's happening in the Mac arena, uh, certainly uh, attend those, and you'll get a good, good information there. Our officers. Jim Holman is our president. Uh, Jim couldn't make it today. Uh, Linda is our vice president. Uh, she was out also. Paul Ebert is our membership secretary, and I don't see Paul, but if he shows up, uh, I'll point him out. Uh, Mike uh, Griffin, he leads the Max SIG and is our treasurer. Stan Miller is our secretary. Andrew Petrucci is our communication coordinator. And my name is Tom Kreitzer. I'm a director at large. I came today. Oh, that, that's that's good there. Just so you know, they're, they're representing. And, and you're willing to take the dues and uh, that, it sounds like, then, too. Uh, members old and new can give Paul their dues. Since Paul's in here, you can drop them off with me, and I'll get it to Paul there. And a reminder, if you're uh, changing emails or retiring from 3M or whatever, uh, uh, make sure and... Uh, uh, notify Paul or myself or one of the board members so that we can uh, keep your information up to date because that's how we send out these notices and other things there. If you have suggestions for topics, you can email your suggestions, talk to any of the board members. We're always looking for people to volunteer or present on how it could be hardware or software that you use at home or work or uh, we do have a monthly newsletter, the eBytes. Uh, if you want to write a short, meaning a sentence or two or a long article, uh, you're welcome to do that. Our website uh, will put our past meeting slides and handouts. So if you miss any of these or uh, lose your handout and want to get another one, uh, you can go out to the website and get that. We usually record the meetings uh, and put those on YouTube. Uh, and so there's a link to those uh, up, on the, up on the site also. We have a deal, deal section, our monthly newsletter, uh, and there's the site there. It's also listed on your page there. And this is, a, for those that haven't seen, uh, David uh, Bromberg, a longtime member of the club, uh, died last week. Uh, so uh, he will be missed here. He was a fun guy to have. He'd be out at the picnics and at a lot of the meetings there, so we'll miss David there. Uh, any club questions before we go on? Yes. A quick one. When I was um, reviewing the uh, email version of the summary of the meeting, I thought it was clicking on something that was going to take me to the design of the meeting. And I ended up clicking into the PDC magazine which is constantly bugging and little reminders on my screen while they work. How can I fix that? Uh, I'm not sure what you ran into there. There are some links in the email to to uh, add a calendar entry uh, to to yours. Uh, and that uh, uh, with the eBytes, you're talking about the eBytes newsletter? The eBytes newsletter does have links to things like PC Magazine and CNET, but. Can I find the link to our monthly summary through eBytes too? Like, uh, the. But that's what I was trying to do, is read the month that I couldn't see it on there. And I thought I was clicking on that and landed up with the PC Magazine little window that sends me all sorts of little things. Oh, that 
maybe maybe after the meeting stop up and You mean you're getting a bunch of emails from PC Magazine or? Well, we can ta we'll talk after the meeting there and, and I can show you, you know, some of the things. Well, I send out, I send out uh, uh, a couple of emails and the emails have a summary of the e-bytes and then a link to the e-bytes and if you click on that link that should bring up the e-bytes and that has links to like PC Magazine and CNET and other oh, things. So maybe I got there and went past where I needed to be. Yeah, uh, you can see me after and we can I can show you some of the stuff. Okay, any other club questions? Okay. Okay, our main topic today is 5G and hotspots or, or tethering uh, by myself, Tom Kreitzer. Uh, 5G is the fifth generation of cellular network technology, and it's starting to be rolled out this year. So there's lots of numbers out there, uh, 5, 6, uh, 4G, uh, uh, and and. The G in this case is for the uh, the cellular network is what we're going to be talking about, or the cell phone network there. Uh, but as you'll see, there's more uses for it than just cell phones. So, uh, uh, but 5G is coming. Uh, it's been in the works for the last couple of years. It's starting to roll out now, and the 5G phones are starting to be released. Uh, so. In order to use 5G on a smartphone, uh, you do have, have to have a phone that is capable of 5G, and some phones are starting to come out, although they are very expensive, premium costs of maybe $1,000 or more. Uh, the Apple iPhone, uh, the new model just came out uh, last week there. Uh, that does not support 5G, and Apple may not support it in 2020. Uh, uh, so. If, if you're looking for 5G uh, on, on your smartphone, uh, again, some of this stuff, it's going to take a while to, to roll out. Full coverage, full speed for 5G uh, is going to take maybe 5 to 10 years. And in uh, some cases, most of the rural areas will never see 5G. Uh, similar to 4G, 4G uh, was, re uh, was released about eight years ago, uh, 4G cellular network, and it took a while for the phones to then come out and the uh, cell antennas to get installed for 4G and everything like that. This is going to take some time too. Uh, 5G cellular is not related to Wi-Fi 6. So uh, I mentioned there's lots of numbers floating around out there now. Uh, Wi-Fi 6 is, uh, uh, you'll see new routers for your home, uh, wireless routers for the home, and they're advertised as Wi-Fi 6. It, uh, in, uh, they used to call the new standards for the Wi-Fi routers, they used to say 802.11ac or 802.11n or 802.11b. Uh, uh, you used to have numbers like that. They wanted to simplify it, so now they're calling the new versions of Wi-Fi, uh, in this case, Wi-Fi 6. So, but Wi-Fi 6 really has nothing to do with 5G. It's just happens that both of them are coming out at about the same time here. Um, yes. One has a router that goes out and goes on any one of these sites of Wi-Fi 6. Do the consumers automatically? Uh, good question. Uh, usually when these new standards, be it for the cell phones or for the Wi-Fi routers, when, when these new standards come out, your old devices cannot take advantage of the new standards because they, they have hardware that only connects to the old standards. So that's where the vendors kind of like this because it's an opportunity for them to sell you new hardware, whether it's a new phone or a new router. Or if you have a tablet and your tablet connects, uh, your tablet connects with a certain Wi-Fi standard. If you want to take advantage of the new one, 
that's where you have to upgrade for it to support the new standard there. Okay. Oh, you're, you're welcome. And, and that's why these things usually take time. So when they first come out, first they define the standard, then uh, the companies start uh, designing products. And, and in the case of the cell phone, they also have to install the antennas and all the infrastructure to support it. Yes? So will the antennas uh, follow the Uh, I'll, I'll touch on it a little bit, uh, but what you run into uh, uh, is similar to like the 4G, when 4G was rolled out for the cellulars, uh, 3G did not disappear. So even today, you get in certain areas and you will not get a 4G signal, but you might get a 3G signal. So uh, as 5G rolls out, in some areas, you won't get a 5G, maybe you'll get a 4G or a 3G. Uh, uh, eventually, as more antennas get rolled out and the coverage is better, then they'll harvest some of the old stuff. But until it is covering everything, you're gonna see a combination of uh, uh, old and new technology there. And, and thankfully, most of the phones and devices are set up to be backwardly compatible to work with. If I buy a new 5G phone, it won't just work for 5G, it'll work for 4G and 3G. Just because if it was just 5G, a lot of the cities don't even have 5G at all now, so you wouldn't be able to get anything. But because 4G is out there, at least you'd be able to get 4G. Then as they put in the 5G, all of a sudden you get the advantage, okay? Okay, a little bit of history on this whole G business. Uh, 1G, uh, the first uh, smartphones, uh, that started in 1979. Those were analog, and you had the voices that would go, ah, go up and down uh, with the frequencies and that. And that uh, supported a maximum speed of 2.4 kilobits per second, which was basically voice only. So the first phones were voice only there. Uh, then uh, you had 2G come out in 1991. Uh, that's when you had digital, digital smartphones, and you had a thing called encryption so that uh, prior to 1G, uh, if you had a, a radio that could get multiple frequencies, you could listen in on people's calls, everyone's calls, because you could just go up and down the dial and, uh, and listen in on people's calls there. But uh, with 1991 digital, then it was encrypted. Speed increased to 64 kilobytes. And the major thing there was, in addition to voice, now you could do texting or SMS uh, with your phone. 3G came out in 2001. Uh, speeds increased 144 kilobits per second up to 2 megabits per second. And the big thing there was... 3G now supported the internet, so you could have like a browser on your phone and you could connect to the internet and you could connect to your mail and, and Facebook and things like that. 4G, that was introduced in 2011. Uh, the technology, uh, LTE technology, uh, speeds range from 10 uh, megabits per second to one gigabyte per second. And not all 4Gs are one gigabyte. 4G is the upper, upper limit with multiple antennas, and, uh, both on your phone and on the uh, transmitter and that. And the big, uh, uh, the big advantage there for like the cell phones was now you were able to watch video without it buffering or, or uh, streaming uh, where you'd have delays there and that. You could do uh, 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 video conferencing and that. Uh, so video was a big thing there. 5G, that's what's being introduced this year. Uh, it uses uh, millimeter waves, which are really short waves. Uh, and the speeds there uh, range from about one gigabit per second max to 35 gigabit per second. And the big uh, uh, improvement there is both in terms of speed uh, and also response. And I'll talk a little bit about response in another slide or two. Uh, this graphic over here is just trying to show the comparison between 3G, 4G, and 5G. 
if you were to try and download a, a two-hour movie, Guardians of the Galaxy, on a 3G phone, it would take 26 hours to download. And they're saying what you could have done during that time is you could have flown from New York to Sydney, including your check-in times. Uh, 4G, because it was faster, uh, six minutes to download the entire movie. Uh, you could run a quick mile or catch up on Facebook. 5G, instead of waiting six minutes uh, for it to download, 3.6 seconds. Uh, and... Basically, all you could do is ask this question, is it downloaded yet? And it would have been downloaded. So uh, the, the increase in speed is pretty dramatic uh, when you go from 26 hours to 3.6 seconds. Okay, in addition to 5G being used for smartphones, because, okay, you got all this speed, uh, but smartphones are pretty fast today. I mean, you can watch video. Most people can do everything they want with the speed today. So what's kind of special about 5G? Well, 5G can be used for more than just a cell phone making voice calls there. Uh, the, uh, instead, of, instead of just being used for the smartphone network, it is expected to be widely used for home internet service. It'll also be used for something called IoT, the Internet of Things, and also for critical communications. So this is just a little graphic, and we'll talk more about this uh, in some slides here. But you have a cell phone tower. It's transmitting a signal. You have an antenna and a modem here that uh, gets the 5G, uh, gets it into your house, uh, converts it to an Ethernet. You have a router inside your house, and you have your home network there where you're uh, connected by cellular to the network. Uh, this is just a little graphic with the Internet of Things. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, uh, uh, the Internet of Things is uh, kind of, they lump all kinds of stuff in there. And next month we'll be talking about a little segment of that, smart devices. Uh, but it's this ability to start putting uh, technology in all kinds of devices. Uh, whether it's cars, whether it's bikes, whether it's uh, uh, planes, whether it's uh, the lamppost, uh, whether it's anything around you starting to communicate with each other. And 5G is going to help with that communication and, and uh, what's going on. With speeds up to 35 gigabits per second, 5G is up to 100 times faster than what most 4G networks are today. And that 35 gigabits per second is uh, usually faster than what most people currently have in their home if you're buying it from Xfinity or CenturyLink, your internet connection. Another big benefit uh, of 5G over 4G is a decrease in response time. Uh, 4G has a response time of 30 milliseconds. So if my phone uh, sends a request to uh, an internet server for it to go up and to get a response back, the fastest that it can go is 30 milliseconds. 5G, instead of being 30 milliseconds, it's one millisecond. And a millisecond, if you're not familiar, is a thousandth of a second. Now, it doesn't sound like you know, okay, so it took 30 milliseconds or 30 thousandths of a second. That's pretty fast. Uh, why, why is one millisecond uh, that much faster? It's, it's less than I can blink my eye. Well, the thing is, when you open like a web page, it's not just one giant flow coming uh, back to your computer and talking back and forth. There's literally thousands of requests for images, parts of text, uh, uh, information flowing back and forth. So the fact that this is uh, uh, 30 times faster is going to make all those inter interactions 30 times faster. Uh, so it, it really is a, an important uh, improvement over, over 4G there. And uh, it especially helps things like gaming. Uh, remote surgery, if you're going to have somebody uh, doing a, a 
uh, prostate surgery remotely out to an area, you want that response to be as fast as possible and no lag or buffering where all of a sudden uh, the device, uh, the robotic device isn't working correctly there. Self-driving cars, uh, uh, cars, uh, in order to be safe, have to be talking to everything around them, not just their own car. And that's part of the flaw in today's technology with a lot of the uh, uh, driver assisted. Uh, they're just looking at you, the single car. Well, this opens the door to all the cars around you starting to talk to each other and, and things like that. Live streaming video, sensors, and thousands of other things that people haven't even thought of yet. Okay, the technology. 5G uh, radio waves use a shorter millimeter length, higher frequency radio wave that has a range of about 600 feet and is highly sensitive to interference by buildings, trees, weather, and other obstacles. And normally you should look at that and you should say, wait, isn't this a step backwards? 4G, you could get maybe a half a mile or a mile. They'd put, they'd put an antenna, uh, you know, half a, half a mile away and you'd get a good signal. You're going to have to be fairly close and hopefully not have a lot of interference of buildings, trees, and weather there because uh, these short waves are, uh, uh, are obstructed by more things than what the uh, 4G was. Uh, but uh, again, and uh, this is a step forward because of the speed and because of the response time and, and other things there uh, that that's the whole reason for this uh, 5G. It does mean that there'll have to be hundreds, thousands of more cell towers around uh, to provide coverage because they're going to have to be closer to every spot there than what the 4G and the 3G uh, were. This I thought was interesting. Uh, about a month ago, I was walking in my neighborhood uh, by our school and up on a post, I saw this, uh, this banner over here and uh, it, uh, uh, it was extolling the dangers of 5G. Are you aware of the rush to roll out 5G, fifth generation technology? Small cells near your home that'll irradiate uh, your living space uh, with microwaves uh, 24 by seven without any studies uh, this, uh, and our safety is at risk there and without, without your knowledge or consent. And so they're trying to get people to sign up uh, uh, at change.org to stop the 5G there. So, yes. Uh, you're going to see towers on almost every, uh, uh, yeah, every every block or two blocks. There is what you're talking about, and you're going to see them on all the poles and stuff like that. So if you go into U.S. Bank Stadium today, U.S. Bank Stadium has 5G. Well, there's antennas, literally every 50 feet. There's antennas. Well, to receive it on your house, that's, you know, we'll be talking more about the home. You'd probably have that uh, just to get a good signal there. But this is, this, uh, this is, they will have to put in new cell towers and not necessarily towers even. You look at every single street light is going to have it probably, or a lot of the street lights will have it. What's that? Yes, yes, and that's the way they currently do it today. Uh, they buy rights to put in antennas and pay a fee usually, uh, and that. Uh, yes, yes, and that's that's what I was going to point out. Concerns about 5G are the latest iteration of the headlines about electromagnetic radiation. Uh, and electromagnetic radiation comes from FM radios produce it, uh, Wi-Fi, your home Wi-Fi router produces it, smart meters. In St. Paul, we had uh, the, the people had come out then against the St. Paul Water Department who was putting in uh, smart meters that were transmitting the readings 
well, they had to wake up and, and act like a little Wi-Fi and shoot a signal. Well, people were saying uh, that's causing all kinds of health problems in that when there were no there were no reputable studies that showed that there were any health problems. Now, long term, we may figure out that the, we maybe should have done things differently, but for the time being, uh, this is, uh, you don't throw away the technology there. And this technology has been approved over in Europe and, and is in use of, in a number of places. It, this is not, uh, you know, witchcraft or that. Yes. Uh, chances are no, uh, just because uh, people wouldn't put up with it, they'd switch to another provider or, you know, somebody, it, it gets pretty competitive there. Uh, so uh, adding these new capabilities uh, isn't going to do it now. The cell phone companies, the cellular companies are licking their chops at being able to provide home net, home internet to people. So that opens up, you know, how many home subscribers are going to have it in addition to their cell phone plans. And, and so it opens up uh, a whole new area that, that they're. Can I switch to Wi-Fi? You, you, you can't just tap into it free of charge. You have to sign up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a little later, we'll be talking about a hotspot where you could take your phone and turn it into a hotspot. But that means if I take my phone, my home network is down, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. And if I don't address it, you can ask. Uh, so 5G is a home Internet. It's it's in its very early days because 5G is in its very early days. Uh, it's going to be easier for wireless carriers to roll out installing a fiber optic line uh, to, to a corner and putting up a cell phone than to every house like CenturyLink and uh, uh, Comcast. If they want to improve the speed, they have to uh, go to every house and do it. This, you're not going to have to go to every house. You can go to every 600 feet and put in a tower and, and get the service. Rather than digging up every street, carriers will install fiber optics to a cell site every few blocks, and then customers would connect using wireless modems. So you'd still have your cell phone towers, but they'd be used both for cell phone and for home internet. And uh, this is the example that I was talking about where you have a cell phone tower, in the house, you have an antenna, could be an internal antenna, could be an external antenna connected to a, a 5G modem, and then that modem connects to your router in your house, and your router gives you your home network and all the devices within there. And that's uh, what's called the high-speed fixed wireless uh, internet. Yes? You have your uh, you have your limitations, but usually what you see in the bu buildings is the building will have uh, a main connection in the building, similar to like what 3M does with uh, the cell phone service and that within here. 3M does not rely on outside cell service being able to penetrate the walls and do stuff. They have they have their main antenna, and then within the building they put in repeaters and these things that allow for you to get cell phone within the building. And that would be the same thing that you could have here is, is uh, within a high rise or, you know, 110 stories or whatever, you'd, you'd have one or two main connections and then the whole building would be able to take advantage there. Okay. And this brings the competition to Comcast and CenturyLink. So they're very scared of, of, uh, this coming because the speed and costs and things like that uh, are going to be 
are, are going to be a direct competition to what they're providing today. I found one of the advantages of Comcast is the cable transmit doesn't depend on what every, you get every range and such and you transmit it. And I'll have a stuff that you can hands on. Well, that's that's the difference between a satellite signal and Comcast. Uh, like the over the air signal, you know, like this is over the air, uh, isn't affected by snow or rain or sleet or you know things like that. Your uh, a satellite is affected because physically the dish gets encased in ice uh, and uh, the snow is accumulating on. Uh, uh, the collector or the dish itself, and that's what's causing the loss of signal. Here you don't have a dish. You don't have a dish here. You have a physical antenna there. And if you remember the old days of TV, similar to the old days of TV, if you've got a nice strong signal and I get my stuff over the air, it doesn't matter what the weather is, my signal is actually going to be better than a Com Comcast signal. It can be affected by weather. So the, the example of weather there, uh, because this is a radio wave, if you have a, a thunderstorm, an electromagnetic, that's where you can have uh, issues there. Isn't a dish receiver somewhat similar to the antenna receiver? No, the dish, the, yeah, and we won't get into the technology, but dishes dishes are collecting a signal, trying to concentrate it, and then have a receiver up on top. Well, if there's anything that interferes with that collecting of the signal, snow on the dish or ice on the dish, you got problems. That's that's the main problem with satellite. Yeah, don't have problems with the snow, but it's well, rain accumulates on the dish, and it changes the way those those waves are trying to be concentrated back to the receiver there, and anything will affect that. Okay, but that won't be true with these antennas. Yeah, these are not dishes. This has, this is not satellite. This is not dishes. I was assuming yeah. that this is a receiver, but there's a difference in the size of the receiver. Right, right, right. Well, so. Yeah, so a dish, a satellite, and that's where he's right, uh, a satellite has to come from way up there, and if you have clouds or a thunderstorm, you're going directly through it, whereas uh, this, you're going to be 600 feet or less. You know, it's like saying, how often does your FM radio go out? It doesn't go out. Now, yes, if there's a building in between or, or something, you can lose some, but that's a different. Comcast, it, it, yeah, that's it. we won't go into you know which is which is better there. Each of them have its advantages and disadvantages, so we won't we won't get into that. Uh, but home users would install a 5G modem or hub which connects wirelessly to the 5G network and then to an Ethernet cable. Uh, to a router inside your house. This is known as fixed wireless. You might have an internal or an external antenna. Uh, might be needed depending on your distance from the 5G source. And so this is an example here. Uh, again, this is an early, early uh, version. Uh, Sprint's HTC 5G costs $600, so it's not cheap. Is a hub designed for use in the home or on the go? This is a portable device, has a battery in it, takes the 5G signal, uh, creates a home Wi-Fi network, so it does create even a little Wi-Fi hotspot there, and has an Ethernet connection out the back. Um, and the antenna in this case is in the device, but let's say you weren't getting a good connection inside the house, similar to a TV. Some people need bigger antennas outside. Some people get a signal fine inside their house because 
uh, of where they where they're located and they're not down in a valley or they're not having all kinds of trees and obstructions in between them and the antenna so it's it's not you know it varies uh, your quality is going to vary and that's where uh, you you get what you need there uh, current data plans for hotspots uh, again this goes back to what what's currently available uh, can be expensive and may also have data caps. An example of Verizon came out with 50 uh, gigabytes of 5G data with an extra 15 gigabytes of 4G light data uh, for $90 a month. So this wasn't cheap. And uh, while 100 gigabytes of high-speed data on Sprint cost $60 a month. So again, these charges are early charges for the modems, early charges for the plans, things are gonna change as, as more of this stuff rolls out. Uh, so 50 gigabytes sounds like a lot until you start figuring out that if you wanted to stream a movie, so you wanted to use it for movies, I, I get my movies over the internet and stuff like that. Well, a 1K movie, uh, meaning a 1080p movie, two hour movie uses almost five gigabytes of data there. So I could watch 10 movies a month and nothing else, and I'd be out of data if I bought this Verizon plan. This is an example of what's to come, though. Instead of Verizon and Sprint, you're going to start seeing these other companies pop up. Uh, this is a startup company in uh, San Francisco. It's called Common Networks, and it's offering 5G to the home. Uh, and it's offering a 300 megabits per second for $50, $49 a month. So that's where I'm saying prices and uh, that are going to change rapidly as you start getting more competition as this stuff starts rolling out. Yeah. No, this is an unlimited. Uh, but you'll notice this is 300 megabits and and. I wasn't going to get into that too much, but uh, when you see the small b, that's bits. Uh, a file, when you look at a file on your PC, that's bytes. Eight bits makes a byte. So uh, if you have a speed of 300 megabits per second, you have to divide it by eight to get the bytes per second. So. Uh, some people say, oh, I, sh I should have been able to download this file and in one minute. Uh, it's a 300 megabyte file, and uh, it's, it's not going to happen there. Oh. Excuse me. Uh, so, yeah, the, the speed's there. This compares in, in uh, San Francisco, uh, Comcast. 200 megabits per second cost $70, or 400 megabits cost $85 as their introductory offer for the first 12 months. So you can see, you know, it's it's less money there. It's not it's it's not half the price. Well, it's almost half the price of the 400 megabits. Uh, but uh, again, these prices are going to change. That's why we as consumers are going to have to see what's available what speeds we need, because, uh, again, 5G could support up to 35 gigabits per second. So if you want the fastest speed, again, you're going to have to pay more for, uh, for speed <coughs> and that. This is just a little comparison of some of the different Internet services uh, that have been compared. Uh, uh, we started with dial-up, and some people still have dial-up. Uh, you're getting less than a megabit per second. Cost is really cheap. Uh, then you have fixed wireless LTE. You can get that. Uh, speed, again, is, is a little more limited for $50 to $85. Satellite, 10 to 30 for $50 to $150. DSL. $40 to $80, cable, $50 to $150, fiber, $50 uh, to $1,000, and the price is there. Uh, 5G, they're expecting that. Again, the speeds are going to be much greater than anything here, and the prices, once they start stabilizing, should be in this uh, $50 to $70 uh, range there. And if you want to see the comparison, uh, I've, I've listed the website here. 
So that's the 5G portion of it. Questions on 5G? It's coming. You can't buy, I wouldn't buy anything right now, but be prepared in the next uh, years to start seeing offers like this and, uh, and see when your neighborhood gets wired and, uh, uh, and the towers go in and what providers start showing up. Yes. You can have some of that. The the standards, the way the way this whole process works is first you come up with standards. So they've already started working on the 6G standards. The 6G standards are currently being worked on. 5G standards were worked on years ago. How they get implemented, you have differences between major carriers. That's why that range of speed, I don't mention one limit for speed because it depends on whose network you're on what the maximum speed is going to be just like your home router if you recall we've had sessions on that where we talk about memo multiple antennas and and multiple connections and stuff like that that's the way you get increased speed with some of these some of these uh, cellular networks and for wi-fi networks well they implement the similar type of thing there where Sprint is going to do it one way and want to sell you their equipment. T-Mobile may do it a different way and want to sell their equipment. So that's where, again, some of these things, it's going to take a while to, to iron out, just like the early 4G. If you remember 4G, we, we started going through that eight years ago. When that first came out, you had 4G, then you had 4G Lite, LTE, uh, and then you had the different versions from the different cell phone providers. Uh, uh, so the early, if you're an early adopter, just expect that the technology that you buy into today may change in the next year or two years uh, and be replaced by something faster or, or that. The reason some of these, the reason Apple did not uh, come out with their phones is they had a dispute with uh, the major provider of the current 5G standard. So 5G is used in a number of places around the world today. We aren't the first country in the world rolling out 5G. Uh, Apple had a dispute with Motorola. They would not come to terms on what the cost was to put that modem inside their phone. So that's why they chose not to put it in this version. They've resolved that issue, but since that time, there's other vendors coming up with other modems that Apple may choose or not choose. Uh, but Apple's afraid of just the thing that Jim is talking about. If they stick one version of a modem in there and a person wants to connect to the Sprint network and the Sprint network says, no, 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 we're only going to work with this modem using this standard. So, yeah, there's, there's, it's, it's complicated right now. But it is going to get better and the future is bright. It just isn't going to happen overnight there. <laughs> Well, because of cell phones and because of everything that, you know, we've all gone through the last years, we've all seen this, both in terms of PCs, smartphones, uh, and stuff like that. We've, uh, we've I guess we're, we're a little more aware of how, how some of this stuff actually works. There's standards, and then it takes time for hardware, and then things change, or this is going to be the next hot thing, and it doesn't end up. So we'll we'll see there. Yeah. I think I still have Well, my phone, like I said, my phone connects uh, 3G uh, probably 10%, uh, 20% of the time. It doesn't get a good 4G signal because depending on where you are in the cities, 
you are not going to get a good 4G signal. Then if there's 3G available, your phone will switch to 3G. So, Right. Right. Yes. Yep. And that's that's like buying a home router too. I mentioned Wi-Fi six coming out. Well, Wi-Fi six is in the same boat. There, there's so many different ways to implement it uh, that they all aren't compatible with each other. So if you buy this router and then you say, oh, okay. Uh, well, this phone doesn't even support Wi-Fi 6. So the best it's going to connect at is 802.11 AC is what, what this, the highest this supports. So devices are going to default back to the lowest common that they can uh, get. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, next, we'll talk about smartphone tethering and hotspots. Tethering is the sharing of a mobile device's internet connection with other connected computers. So that's taking your internet connection, which I can have on here, and sharing it with other devices around there. How many people are doing that today? Okay, so that's that's good there. Uh, is there a difference well, that's it. That's what we'll talk about here. So the tethering is is. Uh, considered the sharing of this. The uh, sharing could be done by Wi-Fi, so another device connecting by Wi-Fi, or in some cases can be Bluetooth, or it can be a physical cable, cable connected between the devices. So that's why tethering covers all of those. So tethering is done, uh, te when tethering is done over Wi-Fi, it's usually called a mobile hotspot, and that allows the device to serve as a portable router. So you have your smartphone, which is connected to the internet, and you're sharing that connection, whether it's by a cable or by Wi-Fi, to a tablet, to a game, to other devices there. Uh, mobile hotspots, uh, just like a router, if, you, if you've ever set up your home router, that uh, uh, may be protected by a PIN or a password and encryption and that. But they also could be open, so, and you'll see uh, how, to set, how the settings can be uh, adjusted there. Most smartphones will support tethering and hotspots. It used to be in the old days uh, that... Uh, you had to buy a special plan from your cell phone provider, and you had to have special phones that would uh, enable you to tether or have a hotspot. Now, almost every phone has that capability. So uh, uh, you may not have used it, but your phone, probably 90, 90 plus percent of the phones are capable of doing it today. Uh, by setting up the Wi-Fi hotspot, you're turning your smartphone into a source uh, for the Internet for those laptops, tablets, and other phones that could connect to your phone. Uh, it's not complicated, uh, and just with a few taps, you can set it up, and that's what we'll go through. Most of the major carriers uh, I mentioned uh, do offer the tethering hotspot service. Uh, check with your provider and understand your data plan limits. <clears throat> So uh, uh, we mentioned uh, with the 5G and stuff like that, limits, uh, uh, if you do have a limit on your cell phone, that's going to be the limit on uh, people connecting to your device and using the Internet also. So if you have an unlimited plan, then you don't have to worry about it as much. But uh, if you have a one gigabyte plan or a five gigabyte plan or something like that, and you start uh, connecting a tablet to it, and on the tablet you're watching uh, high-definition movies, you're going to eat through that, uh, that data, uh, the data in your data plan there. And some of the data plans, even the unlimited plans, if you look at the fine print, it'll say you'll get 4G data, so many gigabytes of 4G data, and then it'll revert back to 3G. It'll slow down. Uh, so... Uh, most of the unlimited plans have some restrictions in them uh, based on the number of uh, gigabytes that you're uh, connecting to the Internet with.
because uh, once you start connecting, uh, if I connect a tablet and other devices to here, all the data is passing through the smartphone and it will count towards your data limit. A hotspot will also eat up your battery. Uh, so it's acting as a router and it has to transmit out. Well, transmitting out consumes a fair amount of uh, uh, battery uh, there and so uh, it'll eat up your battery. You can't just leave it unplugged all day and expect it to be a hotspot all day. You'll, you'll drain the battery down. And so you may want to invest in an external battery or make sure that you plug it in if you have it in the car and you're sharing the connections with the kids' tablets in the back seat. You may want to have it plugged in so it's not draining the battery. Uh, <clears throat> if you're not familiar, most of the cell phone providers will also sell a dedicated Wi Fi hotspot <laughs> device. So instead of a phone or in addition to the phone, you can buy a dedicated hotspot device. So this is, this is a small device about this big. Uh, it doesn't have any, you can't make a phone call with it or anything, but it does uh, be a mobile hotspot in that it connects to a cellular tower, other devices can connect to it, and then now they have uh, internet connectivity. Okay, uh, we'll show uh, uh, a couple of examples here of different phones and what you do to turn it on. So this is the Apple devices, whether it's an iPhone or an iPad. The iPad has to have cellular connectivity. This is if an iPad doesn't have cellular connectivity. You can't turn you can't turn a, a, a dumb iPad into a smartphone. Uh, so uh, it has to have the uh, the uh, cellular connectivity. You go to the settings, personal hotspot. So go to settings, personal hotspot, toggle it on or off. You don't see personal hotspot, tap cellular, personal hotspot. And then there's a uh, note the Wi-Fi password because usually you're gonna want a password. Otherwise, anybody close to you is gonna be able to connect into your phone and, and use the internet uh, from, your, from your phone there. Samsung Galaxy 8 running the Android uh, 9.0, uh, similar type of deal, pull down, tap the mobile hotspot, so there's, uh, and then you go into the mobile uh, hotspots and tethering and turn it on, and again, you can look at the password to get the password and set the password to what you want. Yeah. Yeah. You can change it to anything you want, and I highly recommend that you change it to something else. And, and you'll see some of the options when I, I'll give a demo and I'll show uh, some of the other things that can be set up or changed to. Uh, Moto, Motorola Moto Z, a similar type of deal, settings, network, hotspot. Uh, this device uh, and uh, some of the devices will support the USB or Bluetooth connectivity. So then you have a few more options there. Uh, the Apple didn't support that, but you can set up the hotspot itself and you can change the passwords. LG, uh, you pull down, similar type of deal, uh, go to settings, tethering, toggle it on or off. Google Pixel, similar type of thing, hotspots. OnePlus, similar deal. How we, you can change it there. So now I'll demo, I'll, I'll show you, and let's get here, let me get out of here. First thing I'm gonna do is I am going to start up an application so you can see my phone. And for me to start up, uh, I have this application down here called A Power Mirror. Uh, so this is a, a software running on my laptop. So this is running on my laptop and I'm using, uh, I haven't even signed up for an account here. So I'm just acting as a guest. I can mirror my screen that is going to be on here. Well, we'll be able to see it on the laptop here. So I'm going to do this, plug in my phone here. Yeah. And if I do this and give it a second to recognize it,
and I'm just using this application to so that you can see what I'm doing on the phone. Uh, so that's all I'm doing is is I'm letting you uh, see now the screen that I have on my phone is what you see up there. So if I swipe left, you'll see it moves. I can do the things. This little icon down here is their advertisement. I can't get rid of that unless I bought the version. So that isn't on my phone, but uh, everything else uh, here is, is I can do the stuff on the phone and it'll show up uh, over there, or I can do the stuff here. So in order for me on my phone, mine is a Moto 5 uh, G Play, uh, to turn on tethering and hotspots, I go to settings. So if I open up the app, uh, within here, uh, you'll see I have my typical settings that I can get access to. Uh, but the first one up here is network and internet, and it says Wi-Fi, mobile, data usage, and hotspots. So we'll go into that. Uh, this is where I can go to hotspots and tethering. Currently, it's off. So I go into here. Within the hotspots and tethering uh, for, for this phone, I have options of uh, doing it with a cable. Uh, and I'm, this cable is strictly so that you can see the screen up here. This is not for Wi-Fi. And app power meter is not for me turning it into a, a hotspot. It's just for demo purposes so that you can see what I'm doing on the phone. Uh, and we don't have it turned on here, but there's settings that can be set here. So if I click on this, this is where there's various settings. Because my phone is going to act like a router, uh, routers frequently have many different settings that can be. If you're familiar with your home router, you have literally hundreds of different things that can be set. Phone doesn't have quite that number, but it does have quite a few things that can be set here. One of the things is which, uh, which band do you want to uh, have your hotspot as? 2.4 gigahertz, or in my case, I can create a 5 gigahertz, a 5 or a 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi network. This is the password. Uh, I can show See, it's a real secure password here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's just for demo purposes. Although if you're quick, you know, you'd be able to connect in here. When I turn it on, anybody within range can connect into this. Uh, the other thing is for security. I'm using uh, encryption and security called WPA2. Uh, but actually, I could set it to none. And this would be like a coffee shop where... You wouldn't have to put in a password. Anybody that connected could connect in. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, but uh, some people will do that uh, uh, just to make it easier to connect in. And then this is what uh, my network's going to look like. If somebody sees a network, it's going to say Tom's Tom phone. Uh, but again, I could set this to anything. Uh, in the past, we've talked about security and networks and that. Well, this would be an example. Uh, if I wanted to fool some of you people, I'd come in here and I'd name my network 3M Caribbean Room. And I'd put security none, and I could get some of you to connect into the internet through my phone. Once I get you to connect into my phone with no security, I can see every keystroke that you're doing and every website that you're going out to. Uh, so. That's what uh, some uh, hackers will do out at the airport or in other public spots to steal people's information. So they set up a, a Wi-Fi network and somebody looking for a, uh, looking for a quick way to connect in uh, is, uh, yeah, let me get back here. It went to sleep on me. There we go. Uh, but yeah, you can you can set up. That's the example of somebody setting up a portable hotspot, trying to trick people to connect in, and then monitoring the people what what activities they're doing, passwords that they enter, or things like that. So uh, that's why you know we've always said if you connect at a coffee shop and it's not secure or stuff like that, uh, you you are leaving yourself vulnerable.
What's that? Uh, you'd have to, there's another piece of software that I would load on here, okay. and I could see exactly all the people connected, and I could see all the pages that they're doing and everything that they're typing. Yeah. I'm not sure what the what the limit uh, is, at, I, or if it varies per phone there, I guess. You know, typically people are connecting maybe three or four because one of the limitations here is unlike a home router, this is not going to broadcast to uh, the other end of the house. Uh, the, you probably have to be in uh, almost line of sight to be able to connect to this. But let's go back here. Uh, so I was back in here and I was in the tethering and and so those are the settings, and, and again, there's different, a few different things that I can, uh, I can put here. Uh, but once I've got those settings the way that I want, I come here and then I turn on the portable Wi-Fi hotspot. And so once I turn it on, now this is acting as a router, and uh, the, the, uh, this phone is going to be known as Tom Phone. So if I go to this laptop and now go down here, you can see down here I'm not connected to anything. Currently I'm not connected to anything. But if I open this up, you know, there's the 3M visitor network. Uh, I could uh, get to that. There's Phil's phone. We could connect to Phil. <laughs> Only, if I give you the Only if he gives us a password. And this is my phone. So if I click on this and connect here, because I was testing it, I left the password in there. So it didn't prompt me for the password, but I had put in the password uh, earlier today there. Now, if I did give you the password and you log in, would you have a secure network through my phone so you have some cellular data or not? Well, depending on how I connected between you and my phone and you, if that was unencrypted or that, you could be watching, potentially watching everything that I have. But from your phone on up, it's whatever your cell phone, how your cell phone does it. And if it's a 4G connection, that's a pretty secure connection. However, once it gets up to the internet, then again, there's routers and there's things that people can intercept stuff if it's not encrypted again. I know that they're actually in my system right now. Is there a way I can that out? Usually not on the phone, because the, the, unless, unless you have other apps on the phone. But you can see uh, this, this uh, uh, tethering and hotspot, the settings, there's not a lot of things. Whereas on your home router, again, there's a whole admin screen. You can... Uh, set time of day, you can set what websites people go out to, you can do all kinds of things there. But, uh, yeah, let's see this, there we'll, there we'll turn it, we'll go back, we'll go back. But, uh, yeah, uh, that's that's a different issue there. Yeah? Yeah, it, it severely will drain your battery because it is sending out signals all the time. Uh, just like a normal router uh, sends out signals all the time because wh whoever is going to connect to you, it isn't like this is waiting for somebody to, to do it. It's always on. It's always checking. And, and so, yes, it will drain your battery uh, out there. So, so now I am connected. If I look down here, you can see it says I'm connected to Tom phone and I have internet access. And so uh, now if I use the browser on this laptop, it's actually, and I'll disconnect this tether here uh, that I was using just to display this up on here. You can see I'm still connected here. I'm still connected to Tom phone uh, and the internet there. 
So let's go back here. Yeah. And before I get too many people connected to mine, I am going to turn mine off. <laughs> and, and like Jim said, uh, because it's draining the battery and, and only turn it on when you need it. So if you're in the car and the kids want to get access or, or stuff like that, fine, turn it on, uh, uh, do your stuff or that, and then turn it off when you're done. And, and in the car, you can plug it in so it's not draining the battery, but uh, uh, you know, if you're in a pinch, you can use the internet connection anywhere, in a coffee shop. I know people that go to coffee shops and use their phone because, again, if I use this in a coffee shop, I know exactly the route that it's going. It's going, if I have my laptop in the coffee shop, the laptop is connected to my phone. I know that I'm not a hacker, and then that's connected to the internet. Whereas if I connect this machine to the coffee shop network and there's no security, somebody could be watching what I'm doing. So there's different, uh, that's a, good way to use a hotspot to protect yourself in a place that has public uh, public Wi-Fi that you don't want to use the public Wi-Fi. Yep? Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking about there. Yeah? Usually, usually your cell phone plan will include that, and then it's dependent on your data plan, uh, whether you have a one gigabyte, five, ten, unlimited, uh, uh, and that. And then all the devices connected are going to be consuming part of that data plan uh, that you have there. And like I said, even if you have unlimited, if you read the fine print, after so many gigabytes, it may switch down to 3G, which then would mean, gee, I'm getting a pretty good connection here. I can watch a movie, and then all of a sudden, the movie starts buffering and starts slowing down. So, okay, uh, other questions on hotspots or anything there? But yeah, if you haven't used the hotspots before, certainly uh, give it a try there. Easy to do. Uh, the phones, almost every phone supports it. Almost every cell phone plan supports it. So, uh, uh, you know, and, and certainly in a pinch, if you have a ta tablet or you're going over <laughs> to, I've gone over to my parents' uh, place or we've been out at a restaurant or whatever, and I want to show them something on the tablet, well, I turn on my hotspot, I have my tablet connect to the hotspot, and then I can, you know, show them pictures and other things that I have out there. <laughs> well, they don't know what's going on, you know, <laughs> so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, to them, they don't know whether the picture is going through the internet. Uh, so, so I would say no, it and I don't try and explain it to them. Uh, you know, it's just here. You see this, and you can, uh, you know, you can. I guess they do use their tablet, but it's it's when they can't connect, and and when he doesn't, when he when he can't connect to the uh, internet, there he doesn't understand why he can't get th at things that are out on the internet. <sighs> you know, it's it's that kind of a. Well, why isn't it on the tablet? Isn't it on the tablet? No, this is connecting to these other servers, and when I can't get to the other servers, you can't you can't see it, or you can't get to your mail, or you can't you know do this or that. So, other questions? Yep. Okay. There, there were a couple of, I think there's a couple of people within the club that uh, actually do their home internet through hotspots. Uh, they don't have a Comcast or a CenturyLink. They use their phone, and, and certainly you can uh, set up some things that way. And, and 
uh, again, depending on the data plan and the speeds that you need and stuff like that. Uh, but what you'll see is uh, similar to hotspots, similar to routers is there's different technology there and speed and some of them vary by the provider. So some of the providers wanna sell their device uh, to be the fastest but then the devices that you connect to it also have to support that capability. Right, you do need a strong cell signal. So if you don't have a strong cell signal inside your house, there's no sense planning on a hotspot uh, there. And, and that's why in the future for 5G, that's where some people are going to need an external antenna or that. Let's say you live in a brick uh, building or stuff like that. Well, brick or stucco blocks uh, radio waves a lot more than a wood structure. Yes? I'm obviously way behind on all this stuff, but I hear of announcements that kind of catch my attention. One of them that I think I heard a couple years ago on Yeah, usually what you have there with a, with a mobile hotspot is, you've probably seen them uh, years ago, and, and they still sell it, is uh, like OnStar. OnStar oh, and the cars. And well, what, what OnStar needs is OnStar needs a cellular connection. So you pay a monthly fee for OnStar. So inside your car essentially is a cell phone built in there that goes up to the cellular network, and that's the way you could get uh, a hotspot within your car without using the hotspot on your phone. But indirectly, it is using the same technology. Seeking out the same capability. So then right. that suggests that if you want to speak to OnStar and not pay them a monthly fee, you just bring your phone with it. Uh, the, the auto company isn't going to let you do yeah, that. Okay. So the auto company isn't going to let you connect your phone to so their the, OnStar system. So the most effective way is to have the higher capability on the personal cell phone. Hey, that's what most people do. Most people, if, if you're a family, the, the cheapest route is use your phone, make sure you've got enough data on the plan, uh, if you're going to go on a road trip, you're going to be under the, uh, uh, you know, as long as you can get a good signal, uh, because if you're in uh, Badlands or something like that, there aren't as many cell towers as there are in other areas. So you're not necessarily guaranteed to get a good cell phone signal all across the United States. Well, then, and GPS then, is satellite. That kind of connection? GPS is entirely different. Then we don't want GPS does go to a satellite and takes a satellite system, but your phone, when you want to make a call or you connect to the internet, has to connect to a cell phone tower. <laughs> it's not connecting to a, to a satellite up in space. GPS uses satellites, just like an FM radio signal comes through the walls and all over, uh, the GPS signal from a satellite comes from up there. And even if I didn't have cell phone service on here, I could get my GPS coordinates. I, it, yeah, in theory, in theory, yeah. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Yeah. You mentioned uh, fixed wireless. So apparently there's a new tower in my neighborhood. And apparently there's a transmitter on that tower. And I've got a guy coming. Right now, it would be probably 4G because within the Twin Cities, there's not too much 5G. Uh, the If you live near U.S. Bank Stadium, when they had the Super Bowl, they wired it for 5G because uh, 
of the needs of, of the people that we're attending and, and stuff like that. Uh, but you, if you did a survey of the Twin Cities area, where, where is 5G available? It's available next to nowhere else. Uh, it'll start rolling out. You'll get it more this year, and uh, the whole Twin Cities should probably be covered by the end of next year, but uh, right now there's not a lot. So when yeah, they talk... I wasn't expecting the 5G. Right, that's what I was going to say, what they're... Yeah, and and ideally, let me go back here. Uh, oh. So you don't want you don't want three G. Is 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 what I'm getting at. You want four G. So if they can connect you, and all you're getting is a three G signal, this is like. The internet back in 2001. No, no. I mean, if you were looking at a little bit of mail and and uh, you know minimal internet stuff, it'd be okay. But most people want video. They want stuff to be a little snappier. So you you even though they could connect to a 3G, you don't want 3G. You want a good 4G strong signal there. Okay. Any other? Yes, Jim. They can do that, but you also have you have to watch out for your agreement and some of that. In the old days, it used to be a lot trickier. You'd you'd have uh, uh, oh now it's not skipped my mind there the roaming charges. It's the roaming charges, and that had to do when when you went from one cellular network to another. So it's kind of like going to the bank ATM. Well, if you stay within your bank network, it doesn't cost you anything. Once you start going outside, your costs start going up. And some of them have agreements where they'll share, and you're seeing a little more of that, but that doesn't guarantee that you're going to get coverage everywhere within the current plan that you have. Yeah, and you've got more of those agreements going on because isn't Sprint, uh, Sprint and T-Mobile are combining, or one of what two of two of the major yeah. four are combining, uh, if they can get by the uh, the approval of the antitrust department, and and so uh, we'll we'll see there. But the five G is going to be the same issues of well, again, depending on how fast they get the antennas. The trouble, one of the slides in here I mentioned. 5G may never be available out in the rural areas. And that has that's where the state of Minnesota and other people are saying, maybe we have to do something like the Rural Uni uh, Electrification Act, where they tax the heck out of everybody to pay for a few farmers out in the area being able. I thought they were already doing that. The tax on all my Oh, on the electricity <laughs> that you pay all that. Yes. Yeah. Right. And so, so, so the governor and people will say uh, the entire state should have the advantages of 5G, which I'm all in favor for. The issue is who's going to pay for it. Well, but do I, do I want to do I want to pay uh, let's say a hundred million dollars to service twenty people? Up in northern Minnesota, no, I do not want to do. And
So yeah, it's it's a case of uh, you know you can you can play around at the settings a little bit if you want to see what they do, but uh, uh, you're you know you're set there. Things are working. Right. That's the technology that connects your phone to the cellular network. It 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 will change and go down anyway. So it tries to it tries to get your phone connected any way that it can, and uh, that's why what happens. Uh, yeah, let me turn this off. I'm going to turn the recording off.